what if Etsy gave us as sellers a peek into what they are emphasizing and driving buyers to? And better yet, what if they even spelled out some of the top niches and recipient ideas that we as sellers can leverage as we think about what to list or buyers to target? Spoiler alert, they just did. So for today's video, I want to kick off a new series where I dive into a niche that Etsy has identified for us and walk you through how I would go about coming up with ideas for it, where I'd look for demand, and some ideas on how I might design for it based on trends. And P.S. If you stick around with me, I'll also tell you how to grab my free cheat sheet on this latest new feature. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mandy and is the owner of multiple six-figure businesses, including Etsy print-on-demand shops. My goal is to provide you with strategies to simplify the journey and scale your business faster so that you can stop the overwhelm, start making progress, and thrive with your print-on-demand business. Now, one of the things that you've probably heard me preach is that as you are listing products and optimizing your SEO, you need to be thinking about giftable opportunities. In fact, my three-part formula for long tail keywords is to incorporate one, what it is, two, who it's for, and three, occasions or holidays for which it can be gifted. Well, in case you missed it, Etsy recently announced their brand new feature, Gift Mode, an AI-powered tool built right into Etsy that is intended to help buyers curate gift ideas based on a recipient's specific interests. From wine enthusiast to quilter to goth fan and nature lover, they've even got a category for wabi-sabi decorators. And if it makes you feel any better, I don't know what that means either. They have even onboarded a celebrity ambassador, Drew Barrymore, to serve as their chief gifting officer. And coinciding with this new feature, Etsy also announced that they are going to have an ad slot for the first time ever during the Super Bowl. And if you are curious like me, it turns out Super Bowl ads cost somewhere between six and a half and seven million dollars for a 30 second ad in order to get it in front of more than 110 million viewers. Love them or hate them, Etsy is clearly investing in trying to bring in more buyers to its marketplace. And as an Etsy seller, that should be good news for you. Now you may be thinking as a seller that this is just another gimmick or that this will in no way affect you as a seller. But from a business standpoint, I think ignoring what Etsy is putting right in front of us is a missed opportunity. Think of it this way. Yes, a lot of buyers will still be using the search bars as normal. But given the push that Etsy is doing for gift mode, I think we're going to see a natural uptick in sales for the categories that they are presenting to buyers. In the short amount of time that it's been available, what I've studied is that the personas are static and are rotated based on what users select when they move through the options. But the items that they recommend do rotate. And that's what I believe we can leverage because these are things that target a specific customer identity but are based on something that they may not have ever typed into the search bar. So I see this as another layer to your strategy when creating products for an ideal customer. Creating based on search volume will still be relevant and important, but if you can target some of these newly identified personas as well, or incorporate different elements of them into your existing niches, I believe you can really increase your chances of getting your listings in front of potential buyers. First, we need to identify one or more of the personas that Etsy is using as its basis. To make things easier for you, I actually spent many hours going through every combination I could think of in a gift mode, and I believe I have put together a comprehensive list of most, if not all, of the different baseline recipients. It's a total of nearly 200 different identities. You can grab your copy in the description and use it to literally come up with thousands of different combinations of customers that you could potentially design for. For today's example, I'm going to go down a few different paths related to the tennis fan. And I'll be doing some designs for general tennis fans, combining the tennis fan and wine enthusiast, 
and the coffee connoisseur, as well as some dads that are tennis fans and moms that are tennis fans. And in case you're curious, I know nothing about tennis, so this should be interesting. Next in this process, we need to think about demand. Whenever I'm looking for demand and trends on Etsy, I first always start with broad general searches straight from the source on Etsy. So things like women's shirts, trendy sweatshirts, men's shirts, mug gifts, or even funny stickers. I do this to really get a very broad sense of what's in style and what buyers are actually buying on Etsy at any given time. I also do this from a private browser to minimize search history coming from my own search history and account so that my results are more neutral. Since Etsy personalizes search results based on past user behavior, this isn't a perfect method, but it gets us close enough. As I'm searching, I usually go up to about page three or four of each of the search results. Yes, I could resort the results by the bestseller filter, and yes, I could certainly turn on a third-party browser extension, which sometimes I do. But quite frankly, I want to see exactly what Etsy gives us. I don't actually want to see only the items with the bestseller badges either. I want to be able to click into listings without the badge that may not have huge sales yet so that I can spot the listings that are on the rise. These could be listings that don't have as many sales as other items, but are getting active attention from buyers, which means we have a chance of spotting demand and trends before they're even best sellers. In this process, I'm paying attention to styles and colors and themes across a variety of niches and target customers. And that's intentional because it's these trends and styles that I can then bring back into my specific niche. If you start with just your niche first or get really specific in your initial searches, you're only going to see styles that other sellers have already done in that niche. I'm looking specifically for listings with what I call the little red magic words, meaning it may or may not have a bestseller badge, but I can clearly see that it's getting some attention either in views or in carts or in recent sales. The next thing that I like to do is head to ChatGPT to get some design concepts for my specific niche. I actually built a custom GPT and programmed it so that as a user, you enter in a niche that you want to design for, and then it will respond by asking you the tone that you want, whether it's funny or serious or inspirational. And if you want to cross niche it with anything else, such as coffee or wine or nature, then it will give you design concepts, unique phrases that will resonate specifically with your niche or cross niche, and some AI image generator prompts in case that's something you want to use. I tested it across several different niches and it was pretty cool. Unfortunately, you do have to have the upgraded version of ChatGPT to use it. Sorry, that's an open AI requirement not mine, and I don't get any money from it, but I've included that link for you down below to the custom GPT, and I've also included my chat GPT guide for you as an alternative. It's not quite as fancy, but there are still some of my favorite go-to prompts for coming up with some design ideas. Using this method is how you can start to identify words and phrases that are going to speak directly to your ideal customer. The more that you can create that connection with them in your design, whether it's in the graphical elements or in the words that you use on it, the more likely they are to click into your listing and convert to a sale because it will literally speak to them. Our last stop before I show you the design concepts is potential keywords. For this, I head to E-Rank. And again, I want to start broad. Remember, many of these categories are personas that Etsy generated based on their own data. So ultimately, we wanna be able to have a blend of keywords that are not only based on what Etsy is pointing to, but also what customers are actually searching for. I always start my searches very broad. For example, tennis or wine even, or coffee, whatever you might be combining within those different personas. 
so that I can then look down below at the suggested keywords and star any with potential. I typically create different keyword lists based on the different themes or niches or even products that I might be working on. So you can see here that I've got a few ideas started for this broad tennis category, and we can start to piece these together into long tail keyword phrases for titles, tags, and descriptions. Remember, you want to leverage gifting as part of your SEO strategy. So make sure you're thinking about ways to do that, such as a gift for wine lover and gift for tennis player. You could even incorporate this into a separate section for tennis player gifts. And finally, actually designing for a specific niche. Now, the reason that we don't just dive immediately into designing is we needed to do the pre-work to understand not only what the market is interested in and wants, but also try to understand our niche better so that we have some concepts that will specifically resonate with our customers. Let's look at a few examples of how I took trend and demand concepts and applied them to this specific persona. For this first one, I took the very trendy varsity font concept and applied it for the tennis fan. I've intentionally made it a little girly to capture a slightly different essence than the rest of the tennis shirts that I saw, and I pulled in the racket and ball as the eye in tennis to capture the tennis elements. Simple, but very on trend. For the next one, I combined a couple different gift mode personas, the tennis fan and the coffee connoisseur. For this one, I went with the trendy front and back design and wanted to keep it relatively minimalist based on a lot of the popular items that I saw. I've got a small niche related element on the front, the tennis ball shaped like a heart to represent a love of the sport. I could even take it one step further and add some personalization if I wanted to try that out as a different listing concept. And then on the back was one of the phrases that I got from ChatGPT where I asked it to combine the two themes. It gave me sip, serve, smash, repeat. And then I added in some related elements to tie it all together. Next is for the tennis fan plus wine enthusiast. And the trend that I was going after was the current social club trend. I'm seeing this in tons of niches like pickleball and bachelorette shirts. Normally you see these with more of a martini spin. So instead I'm using one of those Etsy personas of wine enthusiast to leverage a different spin. Again, the wording on here actually came from my ChatGPT prompt. It's a play on the traditional phrase, game, set, match, and is instead game, set, sip. Instead of social club, I change it to racket club. And then there's a funny little phrase at the bottom that says my backhand is better after a Merlot. Now, obviously for me, I'm not a tennis player or a wine drinker for that matter. So this has zero meaning for me but it certainly would for the audience that we're designing for. Remember, creating products based on market demand is not about you. It's about the ideal person searching and buying, either for themselves or for someone they know. Next is for the dad plus tennis fan persona. A lot of trendy shirts use this legend reference, so I pulled that in and I also used a relevant phrase, again, from my ChatGPT prompts, do not underestimate the power of AI in being able to help you come up with concepts. It has been a complete game changer in how quickly I'm able to produce concepts for designs. And remember, simple cells and minimalist designs are in, especially especially if you can leverage them to really speak to your targeted buyer. And last is for our mom tennis fans. This one I went super retro and pulled in the colorful repeating concept of mama, as well as the mascot trend that continues to do well. Something like this can easily work on a tote, a mug, or even a shirt. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'd love to make this a series where I pick an identity from that Etsy gift mode and then walk you through my process for turning that into designs based on demand. 
let me know in the comments if you think that would be helpful for you. And in the meantime, don't forget to grab your copy of my Etsy gift mode cheat sheet down in the description, as well as the link to my niche creator custom GPT if you'd like to check that out as well. If you're looking for a more in-depth understanding of how to design for niches and how to leverage demand, I also want to invite you to my Simply Thrive Club. This month's masterclass that I host exclusively for this group is all about design and demand. Last month was all about niches and next month we'll dive into SEO. If you're seeing this after the fact or can't make it live, all replays from the masterclasses as well as the other live monthly group coaching calls that I host are always available as replays no matter when you join. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you want to learn more about my strategies for thriving in your print on demand business, make sure you've got the notifications turned on for my channel so that you don't miss out on any of my content. And in the meantime, be sure to check out my free print on demand course in the description as well as my time blocking series here on my channel for an even deeper dive on the critical steps for success. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here and I'll see you on the next one.